this is Kim with Mom's Creative Moments and I am bringing you another in um, the layouts that will be a part of our Disney, my Disney um, trip and this is actually a visit to a bakery which I know doesn't really sound like Disneyland but um, if you've been to Disneyland California um, to their California adventure you may know that there is a Bodine sourdough bakery there and I have a daughter who is really into that so we went and visited the bakery and we did a little tour and of course we took a bunch a bunch a bunch of pictures so let's get started and check out my workspace okay okay so this is the last page of the last layout that we did uh, the right hand side of the page of the last layout we did about turtle time remember and the other um, huge screens that were in there um, we moved on from there to the Bodine Bakery and I have I don't know about you but I have a baker in my house my daughter loves to bake and she has tried her hand at many different types of bread and so she got excited when we discovered that the Bodine Bakery was there, not only was it there, but that they actually had a tour that you could walk through and see all the different steps that they took to make um, each type of bread. So um, we took, as, I, as you can imagine, just a ton of pictures. And um, I am actually going to use a, a um, special paper pack that um, we came out with recently that was just a half pack of six sheets but it was called baked with love and I have a few pieces left over from it I have these two uh, lined pieces here I have one of the ones with the bake with the mixer and the baking sheets so I'm gonna go ahead and use those to create this two page two plus page spread we're going to use two six by twelve peekaboo pockets and two twelve by twelve pages to create this um, layout so the first thing i'm going to do is grab my trimmer and i'm going to just cut this cover sheet cover paper in half now this is not a um, piece of cardstock it's just a piece of regular weight paper similar to what you would run through your printer um, but it is acid free and lignin free so we're going to use it um, as our base for inside our 12 by our 6 by 12 peekaboo pockets so I'm going to put that up there to continue to use that I have trimmed a few of these paper or a few of these pictures up um, and I would like to trim them or to um, mat them but I haven't decided what color paper to use and considering the blue that's in this these um, subway tiles that they used I'm and using that as to trim my um, the, some very specific photos um, that we're going to use but for the meantime um, in the meantime until I get that out I just wanted to point out so as we went through this um, bakery there were several places where they had the steps the different steps to making the bread actually written down and and posted so you could tell what they were doing at each different area of the bakery and um, so we took pictures of that. When you are, you know, at a place where you are taking lots of photos, um, try to remember that because it, it definitely helps. It helps you when you go to journal later and you don't have to journal as much when you already have the information right there. And all I did was I just cut this into a uniform size. So each one of the pictures that I have that are of a similar thing where it mentions the steps, I have just cut them into the same size picture. Now these two are the same. They're the same steps. This one cuts off a little bit on the side, but it is larger writing and easier to read than these. And you can kind of guess 
what those tiny little words are that were cut off on this side. So I'm thinking that I'm probably going to use this one instead of this one. Um, then we also had periodically these cute little cutting boards that said ask a baker and, and there was a question and then the answer. And um, I thought that those were super cute and I haven't cut those yet but I would like to cut those into, um, into a shape using our custom cutting system. I had not completely decided which shape to use. Now see this oval is going to be too large. Um, I'm wondering if this oval is big enough. Actually, it is kind of, might actually be big enough to do that with. Or we could use this one, which would actually get the Ask a Baker part in there. Most of it anyway. So maybe we'll use the bigger one just so that that little bit of cuteness is not uh, lost. Okay, so I'm just going to use, this is our custom cutting system if you're not familiar with it. Um, it comes in different sizes. There's different templates, there's circles, there's ovals, there's different shapes. And you, um, you can get three different blades and each blade, the red, the green, and the blue is set just a little bit of a different distance from the channel that you place the little feet in. So you get a different size oval or square or whatever it is. Now mine, as you can imagine, I've used mine for a better part of about 20 years and I really haven't replaced them. So. Um, they are starting to get a little bit dull, so occasionally I have that where I have to kind of cut them just a smidgen. So what I want to do is find the rest of these guys. And I am kind of glad I got, I went with the bigger one because it will accommodate these larger question and answer boards. So that goes with these photos. And that one. Okay. Let me grab my... I'm just going to set this aside because I, will, I know I will need it again when we get to the peekaboo pockets. But for now I'm just going to set it over there. We're going to get rid of those extra pieces and I need some blue paper so that we can mount those other photos. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add emphasis to these instructional pictures by going ahead and mounting them or matting the back of them. And since they are all the same size, I should be able to just cut A strip of this and make them all. So let's see, this is going to be at three and <clears throat> three and a quarter, no, three and five sixteenths is actually what that works out to. Goodness, all right. So let me cut another one of these. Three and five sixteenths. And 
Jackson. Width wise, they're going to be four and a quarter. So there's one. I'll go there. I'll do another one at four and a quarter. This piece is extra. I think there are five of them, so I'm going to need to cut another. I need to cut another piece. So let's see, three and five sixteenths. matting these it definitely helps them stand out from the other photos which is what I want I want to be able to see, have my eye go to them first all right so then there are a couple more within our six by twelves all right I am going to just set these off to the side. We're going to use our stripe paper as our background for this page. And I'm just going to go ahead and get that background put down. Starting in the middle of the page, remember right up against the jeeping and along the bottom corner so that I can line up the base. And after the base is lined up, I can push down the center and the top. And then wherever the outside edge falls, and sometimes it falls a little sh a little shy of the full 12 inches, it's not it's not as noticeable. People are not going to go, ah, that didn't fit as much. All right. Now this is a bit of a unique situation. You know how typically I try to take my photos so that I can um, weld them together. I did not take this photo, but it just so happens that it does tend to, tend to weld together, kind of. Um, not exactly, but kind of close. Gives you an idea what that central con conical rounder looked like. So I want to try to keep those photos together like that if I can. What that means is I might need to crop these two just a little bit more, make them a little smaller. I don't want to crop out the details. I just want to crop out some of this stainless steel that we don't need to have in the photo with us. This is going to be four by four inches square. And we probably could make this one four by four also. Let's see. Oh yeah. Can. Perfect. So those can be four by four with this. 
Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put adhesive on the back of these. You can see the windows that we were all looking into. This must have been on a corner or something so that you could see. How the rest of it kind of worked. these kind of across the top. This one will explain that that is the divider. Actually, these are both this little information rectangle talks about both of these. So that works well. All right. So we're going to set that side aside and that is going to go on that page somewhere. I just am not sure yet whether I want to mount it on something. Okay. Now I'm going to carefully move these over here. And we're going to go ahead and mount this paper. Adhere this paper. Now we've got the overhead proofer. Literally, this was over our head. So each one of these little baskets has a ball of dough in it, and it traveled all over the place. You can see all the all of these that were moving around. And it was kind of wild, but this was literally over our heads in a hallway that we walked through, which is kind of crazy. But definitely cool, but a little crazy. I think that's going to go like that, but let's see how these fit. So this. I'm going to put that up just a little bit off the page. This guy was hard at work. This, these two we can trim down just a little and turn them into four by fours. we can fit a 4 by 4 much easier. A couple of 4 by 4s much easier. To t 
tell the story. And you can see there were balls of dough inside here that were also rotating around and and I think that's an oven actually. So might be a proofer. I'm not sure. Actually. Okay. So let's go ahead and adhere these down and then we can trim off the bits that are hanging over ever so slightly. This one is already stuck. I was worried that might happen. Got a little bit of adhesive stuck to that picture. There we go. All right, now I'm going to just take my scissors and my zero centering ruler. I'm going to turn this around. I'm going to use my zero centering ruler to keep me from cutting into, from slipping and cutting into something I don't want to cut into. I'm just going to lightly go over that picture piece a few times until I can see that it is separating. Don't push too hard if you try that at home because you don't want to go through your whole page. You just want to cut off that portion of the picture. Okay, so just like that. And then we're going to just flip it over and use the scissors part, or scissors as scissors, and just trim, trim off the part that's hanging over. Now the only thing about this is this cute paper doesn't hasn't been used and doesn't have a home and I want to use this cute paper but I'm not really sure what to do with it because I don't want to use it as a base for any either of these circles. I want to um, make sure that we have I mean, you, you, won't, you won't be able to see the design on the paper if we cover it with one of these and cut an edge around it. So, 
Ah, I'm going to need to think about that. So let's take a look at our uh, peekaboo pockets and get those scored away. Okay, so I just set these extra pieces on there. So these are the pieces I was going to use for our peekaboo pockets. Maybe we could use the baking paper. That's, that's an idea I had not considered prior to now. Let's see, let's go ahead and get these ready. there this one needs to be cut then this one needs to be cut okay and that one's going to be on the back okay let's see here so these need to be cut with the custom cutting blades again the red blade this is the large oval I may not have said that earlier sorry about that are good to go with that one. That one's the one that will go on the far left hand side. Let's see about this one. Got another step in the process. Scoring and baking. This one needs to be cut. Ooh. And of these two, these two are just on the back. Nothing super special needs to happen to them. So that's good. Let's just cut this last one and we can get these assembled and we will be ready to. Keep going. Okay. All right, so I think I'm gonna cut this paper in half and use this. And the back is also cute, so I'm not worried about it not uh, not working for the back for pictures on the back. So let's see if we can use this as our base paper for our peekaboo pockets. Okay, so I want to put I want to put these on the front or, or on the uh, make these four and a half or five let's make them five this was a cute little cart that showed all the different pieces types of boating bread that they make there. They've got a Christmas tree, a snowman, a Mickey, and then your typical traditional pieces or styles of bread. And this shows the snow snowmen. As they were 
kind of. Hmm. Scoring and baking, maybe we'll put that up there. Why do bakers score the bread? I don't know if we score our bread when we make it. Do you score yours? Do you bake bread? Not many people do anymore. Super cute. I'm glad I found a use for that, for this paper. That's really cute. I like it. Okay. Scoring and baking and back here. We should trim these up too. Um, the one thing I was disappointed in was that we didn't get to actually try this, the bread, while we were, um, learning all about it. it seemed kind of like a no-brainer to me that we ought to get to, to try it, but we didn't. Which was sad. But... That's okay. All right. So we're going to take our peekaboo pocket, and sometimes I do this. I go ahead and fold that lip over, the one with the adhesive on it, just so that I can be reminded of how that's going to go into my book. It's going to go in like that. This is the piece that's going to go on the back. So I'm going to place it in here like this so that it's in there correctly. and I will place it in my album correctly. Okay, so that one is done. Let's go ahead and do this one. So this is the mixing portion. of the bakery. And I want to leave a little bit of room at the top of this page because it will function as kind of our introduction to the layout. So I'm going to kind of put this um, a little bit towards the bottom so that we can use this part here to put a title. And then this one and we'll put both of these on the back with it. Have you ever made your own sourdough bread? It's quite a process. You have to start with a sourdough starter, which if you if you don't, you have to get that sourdough starter from someone else, I believe. I don't think you can do, you, I don't think you can create your own, but maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's possible to create your own starter. It just takes time. I don't know. If you know, would you share that? in the comments and let us know. That would be awesome. Okay, so once again, I'm gonna take my 
peekaboo pocket, find the opening, fold the back over so that I can see which direction it needs to go. I'm going to be going that way so I know to put this one in first. I mean, I certainly could fix it later. It's just, why not put it in the right way the first time, right? There we go. Okay. All right, now, this is our layout then. Let's look and see about doing some embellishing. Now, along with those cute papers came this cute little embellishment pack, which I've used a couple things from but not everything. So let's see what we can put together to create a couple of cute embellishments. So we've got three words, so we can separate the three words. We can add Some, let's see, let's add those like so. Let me see if I have any more of these. we have that we could use that would be fun we've got a heart got more words another rolling pin yum baked with love We've got a mixer. Super cute. A bowl with a whisk and another hot pad. Okay. So I'm th let's see, here's what I'm thinking. to secure these also. <clears throat> okay, let's see. This says, how long does it take to make Bodine sourdough bread? Stick that up here. And this one says, What makes the bubbles? Formed during fermentation. And fermentation is over here, so let's include this one. right in here. Yeah. Now that's going to fill up a lot of our spaces on this page. So let's see. Let's really like this one. 
And I'm going to add some goodness. You almost can't see all of the, all of that that's like going off the page, huh? Sorry about that. I'm not going to add any um, not going to add any <laughs> foam, foam squares. That's what I was trying to say. Foam squares. Not going to add any foam squares to um, this because I want to um, make it easy for these um, peekaboo pockets to be able to fold up. So I'm not going to um, not going to do that part. But that doesn't mean that we can't add some cute embellishments. So I'm going to just stick this guy kind of right here. And then let's see what can we put stuff and things gathered together This one down here. Okay. And I'm not going to worry about embellishing the um, the rest. All right. So let me just clear a path. <laughs> this, uh, this project got a little bit crazy, didn't it? So, here we go. Here's our two finished pages. I should probably go ahead and attach these. Oh, the cellophane always wants to stay with me. Okay. I'm going to attach these finished pages right here along the edge. Like so. And there we go. There's our two finished pages. And we'll have a title up here that will say Bodine Bakery. And then we've got our step-by-step -step photos. 
that walk us through the process from start to finish. I probably should have flipped this one over, but that's okay. It'll be all right. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope this has been fun and edifying for you. I hope it's inspired you and given you some ideas. Um, I don't always think about using peekaboo pockets, but it does enable me, or it did enable me to turn what likely would have been at least a four page layout, you know, two pages here and then the next two pages as well, um, into just two pages with a couple of fold outs which is nice because then I don't have to come up with a whole nother uh, way of getting these pages into my book. And I didn't do a lot of extra stuff to these pages because there are a lot of photos here and there's a lot to see. And I feel like other things added onto them would just really be more than we needed on these pages. So, um, I hope that that makes sense to you and I hope that um, yeah I hope that you will learn from the experience and if you don't like the way I did it then come up with a better way for yourself but um, but yeah if you'd share it in the comments too if there's a better way that would be great then everyone can learn thanks so much for joining me today and I hope that you have many more creative moments. You have a great day. Bye-bye.